Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 1 Remastered. This is Elgaris 115 speaking and let me welcome you to what I briefly called uh, during our last episode the Tomb Raider 1 level, the Lost Valley. Ah, this is when things will pick up the pace. So in this particular level we are going to find a record number of secrets, that is 5, we are going to get all 16 pickups, we are going to kill all 13 enemies and uh, there are no breakaway tiles here in this level as far as I remember so we don't need to really keep that in mind. There are a couple of deaths and achievements for us to collect. Now I am really looking forward to this one. Uh, one of the achievements we are going to unlock in the Lost Valley is going to require me to essentially do an alternate playthrough of the level so you can absolutely look forward to that. And normally I would start out by jumping to a huge waterfall, but there is an achievement that asks us to pick up a shotgun before we really get our hands on any machine cogs or cogwheels. So there is a nifty shortcut for this very purpose, and that's via us jumping right over here. There we go. And the shotgun happens to be right here next to this unfortunate adventurer, whoever they were. And there we go, lethal and loaded, find the shotgun before collecting any cocks, so it is really as simple as that. Now shotgun, this is the first new non-pistols weapon we have found. Unlike pistols, it is two-handed. It has a different rate of fire and I'm gonna demonstrate that on a particularly worthy enemy, okay? But unlike with pistols, we do have limited ammo, so we can't really waste it willy-nilly. The cool thing is also that if you find a new weapon, it comes preloaded with two shotgun shells. I mean, if you find a new shotgun. Uh, same kind of logic applies to magnums and uzis. Whenever you will find the weapon, it will also come with ammunition that's an equivalent to one pickup. The confusing thing in inventory is that we picked up magnum clips once, but it says two, and the same goes for uzi clips. Uh, we picked them up once in the last secret of the previous level, and it says two. The two refers to the physical number of clips, I guess, but why not just give us the actual ammo count? I truly do not know. They are following the original Tomb Raider logic in this regard, but I was never a fan of this. This was incredibly confusing. Nevertheless, you'll see the real ammo that you have uh, once you find the appropriate weapon. Only uh, four shotgun shells. But they are extremely powerful. So what we are after is essentially find three machine cocks, insert them here and activate this mechanism. If we activate it first, you'll see only the first few gears spinning, right? And nothing happens. The whole idea essentially is to, ooh, almost fell down there, uh, move this door. That's it. This will stop the water flow and reveal passage into the tomb of Qualopec, which is what Natla hired Lara for. It will also redirect the water flow to this here area. And actually in here is the last secret of the level, at least in the order that I'll tackle things. The problem is, whilst we can absolutely enter this corridor now, my god, this photo mode is amazing. We actually don't even need to get Lara physically there. I can show you like this and save up time. So whilst we can absolutely get here physically, we need water to be able to swim up this gap and re uh, essentially reveal the final secret with, you can see, a couple of goodies around, shotgun shells and all that. Yeah, there's no escaping the map itself. <laughs> but just a little glimpse of the skybox. So, whilst we are here, we can also get our hands on one of the five secrets. Not the last one, but, well, in this particular playthrough, the first one. So, there is also going to be really this game's very first boss fight. And we will see a new feature implemented into the Tomb Raider Remaster, and that is a health bar for bosses. Again, when they announced this, I was happy, but what I was hoping for is that, well, we would have the option to toggle health bars for all enemies because that's essentially how you will really get to know how powerful they are or they're not, right? Okay, and now let's get ourselves swept up by the current. So rather than stylishly swan diving, I guess we'll just do this. <laughs> we even heard uh, Shelly Blonde or Lara scream a little, which is awesome. Okay, uh, no, there's no need to waste those shotgun shells, let's get our pistols out and take care of some opposition on the other side of the lake. Uh, cool thing is, on PC version, you can press 2 to get the shotgun out, and you can press 1 to get the pistols out. You cannot do this on console, as far as I'm aware. And the last weapon that you equipped will be taken out when you use the weapon key. 
okay? Just like that. And if shotgun via pressing the hotkey was the last weapon we equipped, now that I press the weapon key, Lara will take the shotgun out. So the game, or Lara remembers exactly what you used for the last time. This also works on the console. Now behind this wall, and more clearly waterfall, is actually the entrance into the next level, but that's why we need all those machine cocks to truly reveal it. Okie dokie, there's a third wolf over here, but let's give him some time to come to us. Yeah, no need to get bitten, want to preserve all the health we can. By the way, one of the achievements I'm also gonna tackle that's pertinent to this level and the next one is Clever Girl. So that implies Lara must not get bitten by any, uh, well, I guess it's no longer a secret. How are you still alive? Jesus, Lara, your aim was terrible. Yeah, so uh, part of the achievement is not to get bitten by any velociraptors whom we're gonna encounter. And this wolf then, mind you, is completely optional if you're in it for all the kills, right? So that's essentially it. Uh, I remember that the achievement for killing all types of enemies, at some point after release, the wording has changed into killing all available enemies. So it is no longer about the types of enemies, but do you actually need to get the maximum number of kills? Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm going to show you how to get all the kills regardless, but there you have it. Okay, so we picked up a large health pack from another unfortunate adventure. And now, oh boy. Uh, Let's keep this rock over here in mind. Oh my god. Oh, I'm climbing up. I'm not getting bitten by you. And here I thought he's gonna attack us a bit later. So this, my friends, is a Velociraptor. Now I'm gonna take a picture of every new enemy type, but a bit later on, not this one in particular, there's gonna be one in much better lighting conditions. And there it is, the Lost Valley opens up. I love what they did with the skybox. In the... Oh, oh, no such luck. We need to act. So, there it is. Attacking us already. It, honestly, it looks way less terrifying than this. This, in my opinion, looks so much better and terrifying. Whereas this is just... I mean, it's like Barney the Dinosaur. You know, it's very derpy, very goofy. I don't think they did a particularly outstanding job with the Velociraptors, but... Oh, well. You win some, you lose some, am I right? When you kill them, I, real feel, uh, I feel really sorry about them because they enter this sort of embryonic position and it's just sad, you know, they're just cute little dinosaurs who want to bite chunks of flesh off of Lara. Anywho, just look at this. They actually made a compromise with the original because the original had a dark uh, a ceiling. Essentially, it had missing skybox due to memory constraints of PlayStation 1 at the time and Sega Saturn. It took to Tomb Raider 2 to actually have proper skyboxes later on. Tomb Raider 1 had no such luxury, so it was this dark, ominous valley, and some people interpreted it as being underground. Uh, personally, I didn't because of the wild number of vegetation that grows here, and it was also confirmed by devs, they just didn't know how to put the skybox back then. But some people prefer this dark aesthetic. I personally prefer this every single time and uh, they actually use the clouds as a means to give us darkness even though it's an open sky and just a glimmer of light in the distance. This is absolutely gorgeous. Now, very important things, let us get that shotgun ready because what's behind the corner is just the most classic Tomb Raider moment. There he is, my god, the wait is over. Nope, Lara, can you please take your pistols out? Oh. And there we go, T-Rex stinked, defeat T-Rex. <laughs> okay, so this is that Tomb Raider moment. Now, I haven't taken a picture of the T-Rex because I was so concerned about blasting him with a shotgun so he doesn't get to bite us. In theory, the Clever girl, girl achievement should be unaffected. You need to not get bitten by Velociraptors. It should not pertain to T-Rex, but I just wanted to be extra safe. However, when tackling the final achievement of this level, I'm gonna take a picture of the T-Rex, don't you worry. So, um, yeah, that's essentially it. The shotgun can really make a short work of this guy, which I just cannot stress enough how valuable that is. This is a, another sort of City of Wilkabamba scenario where a large area opens up and we can discover it left and right, all sorts of different nooks and crannies. 
Ah, this bridge is just absolutely iconic. Don't worry, we're gonna go there. But first of all, you can use the number of waterfalls to the side as sort of landmarks, right? And if you have trouble seeing, you can always toggle to the original graphics, it gets a bit brighter. In the original, this was actually an extremely good spot of uh, taking the T-Rex down from. Uh, but I didn't want to cheese it in that way, you know what I mean? So, I just wanted to get down and dirty and use our shotgun to the best effect. Now, let's take a note of this cave over here. And there should be another Velociraptor up close. If I would recommend even using a shotgun for these encounters if you want to avoid getting bitten at all in Peru. Alright, can you kill it? Thank you. Okay. Thankfully this Barney the dinosaur is a bit confused, didn't chase us outright. And this corridor is optional by the way, it is just for the kill, although you can also use it technically to hide from the T-Rex and maybe snipe him from here, it really depends. But it's a passage that loops in on itself, however, in between the entrance to this passage and the exit, there should be another cave over here. This is not the same one we entered, it can be a bit confusing. And get those guns out, there is another Barney the dinosaur. Okay, and he's down. Awesome. We were not even close to getting bit so far. I'm very happy about that. Okay, and this is a small waterfall cave. Uh, I would recommend you first climb up all the way here. Because we are going to get our hands on the first of the three machine cocks. Huh, these rocks look like fingernails. Ugh, okay, never mind. And there we go. There it is, machine cog. Uh, if you check the sort of uh, wheel moving mechanism, you will probably have figured out that you need three of them even without me telling you, right? But maybe some people enter the valley first. They might be a bit confused as to, well, what's the purpose of these things? I'm gonna do something rather reckless and see if we'll survive or not. Okay, that was pretty dumb, but we survived. That should have been a standing swan dive, not a run up. <laughs> Oh well, there you have it. I actually pulled this off in my original Let's Play for the 1996 version of the Tomb Raider. Now, the cool thing is that, again, just like the original passage loop from an entrance over there to the exit over here, this passage with entrance over here looped into an underwater exit over here, and in between there is again a small cave. So it's sort of the entry-exit loops that can make you miss secrets and other nooks and crannies very easily. There we go, more shotgun ammo. So now we should have two shells, right? Awesome, we can take something down. But I'm not gonna use the shotgun for the rest of this level. We're gonna keep it for later. And also, we emerged from this pool over here. However, above it is a waterfall with a secret and some goodies. We need to use the rocks around it to climb into it. And the way you do it is kind of concealed by the textures. It's easier to see in the original graphics, but you can clearly see a line over there. You can use this place to shimmy to the right. And sometimes Lara will be aligned just perfectly to be able to enter this waterfall, but sometimes she'll be aligned in a way which she cannot, right? For example, now I'm pressing up and she will not climb. If I go right, this was good enough. Sometimes, however, even this will not be good enough. Whether you're here or left or right, you will find yourself unable to climb. In those situations, what really helps is shimmy all the way right, and then just one, two, three to the left, and this way you are always guaranteed to be able to climb up, okay? Just in case you would struggle with that. Because it sometimes requires a pixel perfect alignment. So that's it, another secret. And don't miss uh, the Magnum Clips over here. Very easy to miss in my humble opinion. Okay, awesome, just secrets and supplies galore in this level. Okay, and we'll be back in the water, but we've wrapped up our raptor and machine cop business over there. So let's see what the end of the valley has to offer. Well, Lara, you can put that shotgun back, because we'll need long range for this encounter. There is a huge rock and archway slapped in the middle, and two raptors come running out of the temple. So, again, it puts extra pressure on us to never get bitten by a single one of these guys. By the way, to avoid having Lara shoot at a corpse of an enemy you've already killed and instead refocus on the next one, make sure to release action and repress it again and Lara will automatically switch to a live target. Just a little trick. 
in case you're just holding action and you realize that Lara has been firing at a corpse for ages whilst the other enemy got close to you, don't worry. You can just release action and repress it. Oh, we cannot pass in between this. Oh, I see. Yeah. The hitboxes of objects in the original Tomb Raider weren't exactly the best. They sometimes would take up an entire square, regardless of the actual shape. So now, before we enter the temple, we want to get on its roof because there's the... Well, I, I'm i not sure yet. I would have to do a proper comparison, but one of the, if not the most generous secret of classic Tomb Raider. So, uh, let's just jump here. And these are these jumps might be tricky if you're a new player because they require certain angles and it might be a bit more difficult to judge distances that way. Now, on this roof is essentially a pickup of every kind, except for small health pack. We have a large health pack over here. Very easy to miss. Feel free to switch to original graphics to make objects uh, more easier to see. We have Uzi clips. Oh, behind us we have magnums, which I would have missed if I wouldn't switch to the original. See? <laughs> and... Uh, over on the other side, we should have shotgun shells. There we go. So that's it. We already essentially have four out of five secrets. So uh, two of them are clustered together in the beginning, although we first need to redirect water to get uh, our hands on, uh, on the one I showed you via photo mode. But three of them are just clustered one next to another in this lost valley, which is truly wonderful. So when we enter the temple, it's actually a bit disappointingly barren. There's not much left. A fork in a waterfall and this hilarious looking face of I'm not sure who. There aren't any goodies around and there is a pool but the only purpose of the pool is to go to the right passage over here and get our hands on a machine cock. Okay, there we go. I think each time we pick up one of these there's that mysterious chant sounding. Okay, but I like them. They give us a semblance of civilization of the past. Alright, and we have essentially almost wrapped up our business in the Lost Valley, but remember, we have two, but we need three. Well, there's a cave, right as we exit the temple, very conveniently placed here. And what I love about it is that it will lead us to the collapsed bridge, uh, one of the most memorable landmarks of uh, the Tomb Raider game for me. So, let's get to it. Thankfully, you will not take any falling damage, even if you overshoot with the fall like that. And there we go. And honestly, there is only really one proper way to do this. And that, my friends, is via a handstand climb. It just asks for it. There we go. Shame we can't actually look up and see the sky during it. But this is one of the locations that's been shown via the... Nintendo Direct trailer as well. I can't believe uh, I'm now in the future and we finally moved to this point. Okay, you can very safely slide down that huge rock. And that's essentially it. We wrapped up all the business in the Lost Valley, uh, I think in a very good time as well. We only got hit by the wolves, but not by the T-Rex or the Velociraptors, which is awesome. You know, funny thing, in my original Let's Play of Tomb Raider 1, I used to refer to T-Rex as Tyrex. I just wasn't... It didn't really occur to me at the time, and one of the viewers pointed it out, and then I just started picturing this T-Rex wearing a tie. Yeah, it was absolutely worth it. Um, Okie dokie. So back to the original waterfall. What we want to do is essentially redirect the water flow to clear the water out of the way and enter the Tomb of Qualopec. Uh We can use the rocks over here, even without using any climb action, just via few particularly articulated jumps. If you miss a jump and end up falling into the water, the current will just take you uh, essentially back down so you can repeat. You don't have to worry about dying, saving, loading, that sort of thing. By the way, we still haven't saved, which is awesome. Okay, now before I use this kind of shortcut to get to the shotgun, let me show you the proper way, because there is a series of corridors. It takes a while, so if you'll be doing the time trial, finish the game under five hours, I would recommend my shortcut instead. But maybe, you know, not bother picking up the shotgun for the achievement, but just getting into the valley first and then putting the gears in second. Okay, there we go. So all three will be placed. Oh, and finally, they don't stick out like sore thumbs. Okay, that's very nice. 
<laughs> this is what the mechanism looked like in the original. It's really cute that way. And for the final one... And you still have to press the, man, uh, the lever. Just entering them will not do the trick on its own. Well, what I get is the first and second wheel because they connect all the gear mechanisms. But why on earth is the last wheel needed? It's not connected to anything. Anyway, it is rather unimpressive. I feel like they really did this idea justice in Tomb Raider Anniversary. There it was huge wheels integrated all across the level into the waterfall waterworks. It was kind of breathtaking. So now you can see that this door has shifted and the water no longer flows there, but instead here. So we are now going to be able to get our hands on the final secret. Don't worry, I have not forgotten about it. Ah, I'm so glad we did not get bitten by any velociraptors, but in the next level that might be a trickier ordeal than in this one, because here we had a lot of space to maneuver and we could put a lot of distance in between us. So that's also one of the reasons I'm saving up those shotgun shells, because they might just come in very handy in the next one for that achievement. And there we go! With the water now here, we are able to collect all the goodies. If my memory serves me well, that should be two boxes of shotgun shells and a small health pack. Let's see it. And again, if you have problems seeing items, you can, again, enable the action indicator over here, so it will give you a little exclamation mark. Uh, I don't need it uh, because I've practiced these levels recently, but I actually do recommend using it. But I want to keep the heart and user interface to minimum. Now be careful, that would be quite the falling damage. Instead try to make a jump onto the other side. And now we're gonna do something we should have done in the very beginning, and that's swan dive! Woohoo! But this time there's no waterfall really to accompany us. And this, my friends, has uncovered the entrance into the tomb of Kualopek. So, there we go. Uh, after the door opens, there'll be the level exit screen soon. Before we take another step, I'm going to save the game here. And let us see the statistics. So there we go, Lost Valley. Ooh, still took us 21 minutes. We have found all five secrets, all 16 pickups. We have killed all 13 enemies. And that's why we unlocked uh, the... Tier extinct achievement. We also will unlock the achievement for picking up the shotgun before any of those uh, cogwheels. And there is one more achievement in this level, and I'm going to show you how to get it. And that essentially means beating the entire level without harming the T-Rex. At least that's what the description says. I'm not really sure if that means not killing it and it's okay to harm it. Either way, I'm going to show you how to do this without uh, firing a single bullet on the T-Rex. We're going to use that opportunity to take a lovely picture of him as well. And stick around for two more unique ways to die in this level. If you're not interested in that, then I'm going to see you next time in the final level of Peru. Okay, and we are back to get the Raid Not Kill achievement, which according to Steam is really quite rare. So. What this achievement doesn't tell you is that not only it requires not to harm the T-Rex, it requires you to finish the entire level whilst not having harmed the T-Rex. It is the level exit during which this achievement unlocks. So now we're gonna take things a bit differently, and perhaps this is a good practice for a speedrun eventually. <laughs> by the way, do not worry about getting bitten by the Velociraptors when you're just doing sort of an alternate playthrough for this achievement. I'm still gonna try and avoid that, just to practice, I guess. But uh, it should really have no effect if you reload your save file when you have completed the level and didn't get bitten. It remembers things well. Okay. Now, uh, since we're after just finishing the level as quickly as possible, that means getting the machine cogs, we can ignore the wolf cave. And uh, we will have to ignore the T-Rex itself, but I'm using this opportunity to take a snapshot and also compare it to what he looked like in the original, because, well, we haven't really done that before. I'd like to think that the T-Rex in Tomb Raider 1 is Papa T-Rex and the one in Tomb Raider 3 is Mama T-Rex. <laughs> okay. That took a while, Lara. Your aim is not particularly good in the remasters. By the way, a lot of people have been complaining how the little, well, actually huge spiders in Tomb Raider 2 
takes so much beating in the remasters, and I think it has more to do with um, just how bad Lara's aim is with pistols in this game. Okay, so are you ready for this? First of all, the snapshot. Oh, the, okay, no, we need to get him out in the open. First of all, I would recommend uh, entering this cave first. Maybe from the safety of this cave we can take a picture. Uh, let's see it. <laughs> okay, I have to say they did a lot of work on T-Rex since the official announcement trailer. I was not happy with what he looked like back there, but they put some effort in, which I'm a big fan of. Okay, let's take a picture angle just like this. And in the original graphics. There we go. Actually, in the original he is more terrifying due to the virtue of the black ceiling, you know, the lack of a skybox. So our mission really will be to outrun this guy and not lay a finger on him. Ooh, close call there. Then again, I don't know why I care about not getting bitten in this playthrough. But anyway, we use this optional passage to really hide away from the T-Rex. That's it. There is no other purpose. And now, let us jump into the pool over here. And we're sort of entering this little cavern with waterfall from the other side. There is a Velociraptor, but maybe if we're quick enough, we can ignore it. Or not. Oh. Okay, we did it. And as I said, do not worry about being bitten by the Velociraptor. It does not mess up the Clever Girl achievement for your playthrough that you actually saved. I have tested this on PS4 and it worked fine, even when I got myself killed by a Velociraptor, okay? It's the same thing how when we did the dance with the wolves achievement, it did not mess up our Nomads run because we just reloaded the save when we didn't use a med pack. Okay. And let's do this carefully, although I don't know, I, I feel fairly confident now that we can do it with a standing swan dive. Yay! Nice. Okay, now the moment we climb out of here, um, we are gonna get harassed by the T-Rex, but remember, for this achievement playthrough, it's fine to use med packs. Ah, oh, shoot, he's there! Oh no, we need to get to the temple, but I don't want to fire off at him even once. And we do need to get rid of these guys. Okay, one of them down. I don't know if Lara aims at a Velociraptor or T-Rex. You know what, I'm not gonna take any chances, so <laughs> let's just outrun these guys and immediately get over here for the second machine cog. Yay! Now, do you guys remember where the third one is? It is uh, on the other end of the collapsed bridge. That's where we need to go. Oh, shoot, he knows exactly where I wanted to climb out of the water. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna take my time with you. Awesome. And let us immediately get on this side over here. If you can not waste time by manually climbing up these blocks, use the jump. Lara's uh, altitude when making a running jump is essentially at the peak of her height, one block, okay? So that's what you'll see me doing from time to time. And now, we just need to make it across this bridge. And hopefully the T-Rex is not high enough to actually touch us when we're hanging, but do not do a handstand climb. We need to be a bit quick. Oh my god. He is close. <laughs> He's just hoping for Lara to follow. Okay. Now, my friends, this is where the difficult part begins. I am absolutely doing this with a full health. We have all three machine cogs. We just need to make it safely to the beginning where the mechanism is. Now, if there is a way we could distract the T-Rex to get the hell lost, I would have. But unfortunately, doesn't quite work out like that. Okay, let's wait for it to pass. And I think I smell an opportunity in the air. Do a mid-air roll as you're jumping. It's gonna help you out. And now it is really up to RNG Jesus if T-Rex will decide to bite our head off with one hit or not. Immediately climb up here. Oh my god, the screen is shaking. He is approaching. This is terrifying. Oh my god, we made it. We made it. He cannot get to us from here, okay? I 
hope so. Anyway, by the way, this is truly terrifying because, you know, T-Rex himself, he's not such a tough boss, even with just pistols only. He does not have as much health as even some of the later enemies in the game. But they did manage to make T-Rex terrifying via this achievement because he's just this unstoppable force of destruction that you cannot harm for the purpose of this achievement. So it's a lot of fun, really. Okay, there we go. And by now you know exactly what to do, right? We just need to make a series of jumps, not fall into the water. Although that's not gonna kill us, just delay us somewhat. And we'll be fine getting to the mechanism. And you know what? I think I'm gonna use the shortcut I used for picking up the shotgun, because why the hell not? We can use uh, sort of the side corridor to climb up there anyway. Okay. And now let's climb it up. I think this is some useful advice for if and when you'll be doing the sort of finish the game under five hours achievement. I'm actually thinking about tackling the New Game Plus, but with no commentary whatsoever. So just to allow you to enjoy the atmosphere, as quiet as it is. Me still 100%ing the levels, all item skills and that sort of thing. But just doing no commentary and just uh, having it as a quiet, relaxing video. We'll see. Life is short, I cannot do everything, but this to me sounds like it could be a fairly neat idea. Now let's not jump back into the water. Remember, we're interested in just finishing the level, not getting the secret. So instead, if we take the path via the surrounding corridors like this, uh, we should safely descend Wait a second, isn't there a tunnel on this side? Oh, that's interesting, so I misremembered it. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, let's jump across here. Okay, and let's make it over here. You will not be able to continue there on foot because uh, where the water used to turn into waterfall, it is now sort of an inaccessible slippery slope, right? So we'll have to go by the side. But, you know what, it's another swan dive opportunity, so I'm not gonna complain. We can never do enough of these, can we? Heck, even in Tomb Raider Anniversary, the game tooltip tells you how you can swan dive when you reach this spot. The devs knew. Okay, and that should really be it. Now we'll enter the Tomb of Qualipec. I'm really interested to see our time and the stats, how little we did, just for the purposes of this achievement. There we go. Raid, not kill, do not hurt T-Rex. Took us just over 8 minutes. And we got fine with just eight kills. So it's up to you to decide whether this achievement is worth it or not. It is pretty rare and I think it's a lot of fun to try to outrun the T-Rex. Who did not kill us this time? And you know what that means. If you're interested in the deadline achievement and us collecting all sorts of various deaths, Lara can die, please stick around because that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so the two new deaths to this level are very straightforward. They have exactly everything to do with the two new enemy types we have encountered. Uh, let's summon the raptors first. There should be another one. There he is. This should make the process quicker if they team up. Let's see it. Well, there we go. It wasn't really much to look at, was it? <laughs> and now, using my City of Wilkabamba safe, I'll see you guys again at this spot so that we'll get that one unique animation that only T-Rex can pull off. Here we are back again. Now what you want to do is really get rid of the stragglers so that you'll have a guarantee that T-Rex will be the one landing the kill in the bone, not one of the Barneeds, the dinosaurs. So uh, let's do away with them real quick. Oh, we can let them damage us, doesn't matter for the purposes of this segment. And there we go, no matter how much health you have, T-Rex can initiate a particular animation. Oh, wow. If you in the danger of being trampled to death, I would recommend hopping ahead a health pack. Ah, so number 9 on keyboard is a large health pack, good to know. And I'll test now number 0 on the hotkeys. Ah. <laughs> there we go. So I just really wanted you to see this death. By the way, you can also, in a sense, die next to T-Rex by touching him as he's moving around. That is 
technically a different kind of death, but I tested it, it does not count as a unique death. As I'm showing on the screen, we are now at 10 deaths. So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this amazing animation. I think there is really only one other enemy boss later in the game that has something like this. And I'll see you next time in the final Peru level, the actual Tomb of Kualopek.